Greetings everyone. This is video 3 on Fourier series. In the next few videos we will see few applications of Fourier analysis in our real life such as 1. Medical imaging. 2. Engineering. 3. Computer science and so on. Because we have not yet analyzed the details involving Fourier series and Fourier transforms the following few videos on the application of Fourier analysis will be kept simple. In this video we will see briefly how Fourier analysis is involved the field of medical science or in particular medical imaging. Now to understand medical imaging we will begin with Fourier transform. Although we will be discussing Fourier transform in another video series, here is a short description. Till now it must have been clear that Fourier series deals with the periodic functions on the real line. But what if the function is non-periodic? The answer is Fourier transform. So we can say in short that Fourier series expresses periodic function as a sum of sine and cosine and Fourier transform deals with non-periodic function in terms of sine and cosine. The Fourier transform of a nice function f is given below us. And the inverse Fourier transform of f is given below us. The definition of nice function will be given in another video series on Fourier transform. We are all familiar with medical imaging such as plain X-rays, magnetic resonance imaging (MRI), computed tomography (CT), computerized axial tomography (CAT), etc. We will consider the simplest of the cases possible to understand the process clearly. The overall procedure is as follows. First, a radiation source is used to emit X-rays which passes through the body and is then detected and recorded on the radiation detector. As X-rays travel throughout the body, its intensity changes due to the fact that different tissues or muscles or bones absorbs different amount of radiations. The picture given below shows this with a section of the brain. Then the recording of the changing intensities gives a 2D image which reflects the content of the section of the body that the X-rays passes through. Now, some amount of energy is lost by an X-ray beam as it travels through a medium which depends on the density of the medium. Attenuation coefficient tells us how much of such energy is absorbed and it is denoted by R of X. Attenuation coefficient is a property of the medium. It depends on the density of the medium. Higher the density of an object higher is the attenuation coefficient and vice versa. Here we slow down a bit. Now we want to relate the intensities with the attenuation coefficient. Here we use the Beer-Lambert law, which expresses the relation as given below. Here I0 and I1 are the initial and final intensities of the beam. And A of X is the attenuation coefficient. Our aim is to determine the attenuation coefficient and for that we require to understand something called radon transform. The radon transform of a function f defined on the plane is given as below. We will see how the function f is analogous to the attenuation coefficient. Here, the value of the integral on the right-hand side of the above equation says about the total density of the function f along a given line, which is at a distance p from the origin and at an angle theta with the x-axis. Here we can see the analogous relation the two important equations. Since a of x is the unknown quantity which is analogous to the function f in the radon transform. Therefore, to recover R of x, we need to find an inversion formula for the radon transform. Unfortunately, there is no single straightforward answer to this solution. Further diving in this will not be much helpful without some rigorous analysis in Fourier transform. But before we end our discussion we will see how Fourier transform is used. The relationship between radon transform and Fourier transform is given by the central slice theorem. The central slice theorem is a link between the 2D Fourier transform and the one-dimensional Fourier transform of the radon transform. It's stated by the equation given below. This 
This idea is demonstrated in the figure below. In the left part of the figure we start with a function capital F and apply the radon transform. To get a projection small g. To which we then apply the Fourier transform. Receiving the orange capital G function at the top of the figure. In the right half we take the two-dimensional Fourier transform of the orange slice of capital F parallel to the projection line. This two-dimensional Fourier transform also equals the orange capital G function depicted at the top of the image. As we have seen, the central idea was to find the attenuation coefficient with the help of radon transform, which in turn is related to Fourier transform by the central slice theorem. With the help of attenuation coefficient we can then get the two-dimensional image of the scanned organ with some further procedures. Thank you.